it may be nothing more than a bluff, Israeli officers don't think so. They continue to beef up their forces on the Golan Heights. Strategists figure the attack could come before Secretary Kissinger's visit later this month so as to create a climate of crisis. Or it might come after his trip if Kissinger is unable to work out a compromise. Right now, the two sides are hopelessly deadlocked. The Syrians want now not only the bulge Israel captured last October, they also want back the shattered city of Penetra, plus other territory captured in 1967. Finally, they want a timetable for total withdrawal. Their bargaining position isn't very good. They've even lost their old observation posts on Mount Hermon. It's in preparation for a new attack, military sources figure, that the Syrians are now trying to get those outposts back. Thus, the current skirmishing is only a prelude to an all-out battle, according to this assessment. As a result, Israeli forces continue on top alert. Crew members stay close to their tanks. When and if the attack does come, the Israelis admit they could lose the first round. For example, the Syrians could come around this hill, they're on the other side now, with, say, 300 tanks, and there's no way the Israelis could stop all of them. In one day of intensive fighting, the Syrian army could probably push the Israelis back a mile or so, though they'd pay a heavy price. The Israelis figure their guns and tanks could push the Syrians back in a second round, but they think pressure from the United Nations for a ceasefire might eliminate the second round. Thus, Syria might well gain a psychological victory win back some of the pride it lost along here in October, and create a new crisis placing heavy pressure on Israel to make concessions. It's a scenario that has the Israelis deeply concerned. David Burrington, NBC News, in occupied Syria. Okay, 
כתוב רב בעיתון לאחר הירי, אחר הירי התוכני. For example, the Syrians could come around this hill. There, let me start over again. For example, the Syrians could come around this hill. They're behind it. Now, turn it off. Okay. For example, the Syrians could come around this hill. They're the... Damn it. For example, the Syrians could come around this hill. They're on the other side now, with, say, 300 tanks. And there's no way the Israelis could stop all of them. In one day of intensive fighting, the Syrian army could probably push the Israelis back a mile or so, though they'd pay a heavy price. Okay. For example, the Syrian army... Oh, drat, cut it. Just okay. For example, the Syrians could come around this hill. They're on the other side now, with, say, 300 tanks. And there's no way the Israelis could stop all of them. In one day of intensive fighting, the Syrian army could probably push the Israelis back a mile or so, though they'd pay a heavy price. Israeli strategists figure the attack would probably last only one day. Then they think the Russians would conveniently arrange a ceasefire through the United Nations before the Israelis had time to organize a counterattack. David Burrington, NBC News, in occupied Syria. Israeli strategists figure the start again. Israeli strategists figure the attack probably would only last one day. Then they think the Russians would conveniently arrange a ceasefire through the United Nations before the Israelis could organize a counterattack. The fear is that such a strategy to force concessions just might work. David Burrington, NBC News, in occupied Syria. Israeli strategists figure the attack would probably last only one day. Then they think the Russians would conveniently arrange a ceasefire through the United Nations before the Israelis could organize a counterattack. The fear is that such a strategy to force concessions just might work. David Burrington, NBC News, in occupied Syria. Wild.